We're in a new chapter now, chapter 11, and we're going to talk about three-dimensional figures, how they're formed, and their properties. This is 11.1a, and this lesson is split into three parts. Three-dimensional figures, or solids, can be made up of flat or curved surfaces, and each flat surface is called a face. So each of these flat surfaces are called a face, and a segment that is the intersection of two faces is an edge. So you can see all our purple edges that are connecting the faces together. A vertex is the point that is the intersection of three or more faces. So you can see these corners here, that's the intersection of three or more faces. Now back in lesson 9.5, we discussed symmetry in three-dimensional shapes, and I'll have a link to that video's description if you need to see it. I have four examples of three-dimensional figures for your notes. Our first term is prism, and it's formed by two parallel congruent polygonal faces called bases. So we have a triangle base here, and we have a triangle ba base back there, and they are considered faces. And they're connected by faces that are parallelograms. And a cylinder is formed by two parallel congruent circular bases and a curved surface that connects the bases. So this would be our first base, and we could call it base sub 1, and that's our second base, base sub 2. A pyramid is formed by a polygonal base and triangular faces that meet at a common vertex. So these triangular faces are meeting at these vertices. And the top vertex can also be called an apex, and we'll talk about that in a second. And the cone is formed by a circular base and a curved surface that connects the base to a vertex, which can also be called an apex. A cube is a prism with six square faces, so they're all the same size. A cuboid has six faces that can be any quadrilateral but are typically rectangles that form right angles at its vertices. A cuboid whose faces are all squares is a cube. But all cubes are cuboids, but not all cuboids are cubes. It's like all poodles are dogs, but not all dogs are poodles because the definition of a cuboid has a wider range than the definition of cube. It's a broader definition. And there are other prisms and pyramids that are named for the shape of their bases. So for this prism, it's a triangular prism because its base is a triangle. Rectangular prism because its base is a rectangle, and so on. Pentagon, pentagonal prism. Hexagon, hexagonal prism. And same thing with these pyramids. It's got a triangle base, so it's a triangle pyramid. Triangular. And this is a rectangular pyramid because it's got a rectangle. That's got a pentagon. That's got a hexagon. So the shape of their base determines their name. Now I know a lot of you learned all this in middle school, but here's more review from middle school because I want us to be all on the same page. This entire chapter 11 is about surface area and volume and we can label the bases as base sub 1, that's a subscript, so it's a little 1. We read it as base sub 1 and base sub 2 for the first base and the second base. And we use them to identify the bases in a formula for surface area or volume. Here we have a trapezoidal prism. You can see this trapezoid base and this trapezoid base. And they're connected by quadrilaterals, aren't they? And this cylinder has base sub 1 and base sub 2 and a curved surface. And by now, you should be familiar with slant height. Slant height is the distance measured along a lateral face from the base to the apex, or top vertex, along the center of the face. So here we've got a slant height on this square pyramid here. You can see it coming straight down that face in the center of it. An apex is the top or highest part of something, like a mountain or a roof on a house, or this pyramid figure. It could even be a career. You could have an apex to your career when you were doing your best, making the most money, and doing the best work. And it narrows to a point. 
So here we have properties of some 3D shapes. We've got their shape, how many faces they have, how many edges they have, and how many vertices they have. And the cube has six faces, one in the front, one in the back, four going around. There are 12 edges connecting those faces, and there's eight vertices, eight corners. And the cuboid has the same as the cube, six faces, 12 edges, and eight vertices. A triangular prism has five faces, this one in the front, that one in the back, and the three going around it. It's got nine edges. There's nine line segments connecting those faces. It's got six vertices, six little corners. For a triangular pyramid or tetrahedon, it's got four faces, the three going around it and the one at the bottom, which we can also call the base. It's got six edges and four vertices, the three going around and the one on top, that apex. A square pyramid or rectangular pyramid, remember it's named because of the shape of the base, has five faces. It's got four going around and the one on the bottom, which we can also call a base. It's got eight edges connecting those faces and it's got five vertices. Now there's a debate about the number of faces and edges on cones and cylinders and even spheres. Some textbooks define a face as a flat surface. So they'll accept any flat surface. Others define it as a flat surface with straight edges. An edge is defined as a line segment along which two faces of a polyhedron intersect in some books. Others say it refers to the interval. It's a straight line formed where two faces of a 3D figure meet. Well, a polyhedron is a 3D solid with flat polygonal faces, straight edges, and sharp corners, vertices. So would a sphere have a face? There's no straight edges on a sphere. So to avoid arguments, let's refer to them as surfaces and not faces, okay? So a cone has one curved surface and one circular surface as its base. A cylinder has one curved surface going around, and it's got two circular surfaces, which are its bases. And a sphere just has one surface. So do these 3D figures have edges? Well, an edge is a line segment, and a line segment is part of a straight line that is bounded by two distinct endpoints. Well, they aren't polyhedrons because they have curves, so no, they don't have edges. Our next lesson, next part of this lesson, is we're going to classify and identify 3D figures from a net. That's a net. It's going to be followed by cross sections of 3D figures in 11.1c. That'll be the final part of this lesson. So it can be very confusing whether a cone, cylinder, and sphere have a face or not. Is that base a face? And some teachers will argue about it. There's a big debate going on about it. So I hope my information was useful and it set some things straight. And I hope you're doing well. And I'll see you for the second part of this lesson in 11.1b. Have a great day. Bye.